Hello friends, this video on chemical coordination and integration part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Hormone. So we see that this luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, both of them stimulate gonadal activity. That is the female gonads, the, the sexual organs. So it helps in the growth and development of the sexual organs and that is why both of them together are known as gonadotropins because of their functions. They are called gonadotropins, LH and FSH. Right, so you got what their functions, LH will induce ovulation and FSH will induce the growth and development of the follicles, be it the ovarian follicle or be it the corpus luteum. So these were all the hormones which are secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. Now let us look at the posterior pituitary hormones. Now what are the hormones secreted by posterior pituitary? As I had mentioned before, posterior pituitary is nothing but it is a part of the hypothalamus. So the hormones which are secreted by them are actually secreted by the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus makes these hormones and transport them to posterior pituitary through the axon terminals of hypothalamic neurons. So in one way we can say that they are secreted in the posterior pituitary because the axon terminal of the neuron ends in the posterior pituitary but actually they are synthesized by the hypothalamus. So what are these hormones? There are two hormones like this, oxytocin and vasopressin. So let us see what is oxytocin. This is also known as the birth hormone. Why birth hormone? Because this also acts primarily on the female body where it regulates the contraction and relaxation of uterus muscles during childbirth. So have you ever seen that when, um, have you ever seen or have you ever heard of a lady experiencing a lot of pain while she gives birth to her child? Why does that happen? Now, when a female gets pregnant, what happens is that the child is the child which remains inside her body in the uterus. So uterus is that sac-like structure which can actually keep the child for nine months, right? Now, when the childbirth has to take place, the child has to be moved out of the uterus. And how does that movement happen? That movement is facilitated by the contraction and relaxation of the uterus muscles. That contraction and expansion actually pushes the child towards the vaginal opening so that the child can be brought out of the female body. Right? So during this contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the uterus, some hormone has to play the role. So that hormone is the oxytocin. So what does this hormone do? This hormone acts on the smooth muscles of the body and cause their contraction. So somebody has to initiate that process of contraction and that is done by the oxytocin hormone. That is why this oxytocin is also known as the milk ejecting hormone. Why milk ejecting hormone? Because it regulates the milk expulsion during lactation. Now please understand this. Pro difference between prolactin and oxytocin. So what does it do? Oxytocin will only help in the contraction of muscles. Now in the mammary gland, you need some hormone which actually helps the mammary glands to grow and develop so that it can produce milk. So that particular hormone is the prolactin which helps the mammary gland to be developed so that it can produce milk. On the other side, you need another hormone which can cause contraction of the muscles of the mammary gland so that the milk can be brought out so that the milk can be sucked in so those that those hormones which actually help in the contraction of the muscles that is the oxytocin so that is why it is known as milk ejecting hormone because it does not help in the production of milk or it does not help the mammary gland in any way it ju just helps the milk to be ejected out of the mammary gland that is why it is milk ejecting hormone next is the vasopressin what does it do? It regulates the water balance in the body. So one example of uh, vasopressin or vasopressin is often known as the ADH that is antidiuretic hormone. That is because it controls the water balance in, of the body. How does it control the water balance? By reabsorption of water and electrolytes by DCT in kidneys. Now this we discussed about the excretory system in detail when we spoke about kidneys, right? Inside kidney, what are the functional units of kidney? They are nephrons. Then this is how the structure of a nephron looked like. You remember? Yes. 
So here we saw that there was a part where reabsorption of water and electrolytes took place known as the DCT or distal convoluted tubule. So this portion, this yellow colored structure here, but too much coiled structure, this was distal convoluted tubule. So where a lot of water reabsorption took place. So this water reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule happened due to the presence of this hormone vasopressin. Vasopressin is also known as ADH or this is antidiuretic hormone. So this is antidiuretic hormone. Why it is called antidiuretic? Anti means opposite or against. Diuretic so th this means it limits the formation of urine. So that is why anti-urine or anti-uretic or anti-diuretic because it limits the formation of urine or it causes separation of urine. Why so? Because it is trying to absorb more and more water from the urine. So it is not allowing a lot of urine to be formed. That is why anti-diuretic hormone. So that is not something wrong because it is actually trying to reabsorb more water for the body which is going to be helpful for the body. So these two hormones, oxy Oxytocin and vasopressin are the posterior pituitary hormones. So as I said, this is the antidiuretic hormone. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.